At first it was really gross. It got me wondering, is this animal cruelty? Is it even worth it? Does it work? It kind of comes out slimy. Hi, bougie frugals. Snail goo. I put it on my face for like a year. So let's get into it. I was introduced to snail mucin, specifically the brand Cosarex, totally by accident. I had actually went to Ulta looking for this Andalou body butter. I love this lotion because it's very thick, more of a body butter, and it smooths and nourishes the skin. I love how it smooths your face and kind of fills in and plumps the wrinkles even on your hands. So I was running low on it, and up until recently when I found a store that always has it, I was having trouble finding it, and online suggested that Ulta would have it. So I walked in, and there was a very cute girl in the entrance greeting every everyone, and I asked if they carried the Andalou brand of lotions, specifically the Kukui butter I was looking for, and she said they didn't have it, but she suggested that I try this advanced snail mucin. She told me it would give me a really glassy, glowy looking skin, and it was kind of great as a primer, because I explained to her what I was looking for from that lotion, and she's like, oh, try this, it's great as a primer, it really like gives you that glassy, glowy skin look. So, the sucker that I am, and without doing any research, I purchased it on her recommendation. This is not normally how I operate. I usually research things before I buy them, really do my deep dives and kind of make my own decisions before just impulse buying something. So I definitely did not think it through. But now a year later, I definitely have experience with the product and I've done my research because it definitely made me curious after I started using it. So let's get into it. First of all, I don't think these two products are anything alike. This is more of a smoothing, lotion-y, buttery type of feel, almost like a shea butter and the snail mucin is more like sits on top of your skin and gives you a very glazed look. So this product claims to have 96% snail mucin, meaning it's mostly composed of this and it's the number one ingredient. It claims to nourish, repair, plump, and moisturize your skin. It's supposed to improve your radiance and brighten the skin, plump the skin, reduce fine lines and wrinkles over time, and enhance your glow. They say it's good for all skin types, especially dehydrated and aging skin. I would agree with some of those claims. Upon application, it definitely gives you that radiance and that glow, but I don't find that it gives me long-lasting hydration. I don't find that it sinks in. I kind of feel that it evaporates. Once it has evaporated slash dissipated, I don't find that it gives a long-lasting hydration. Once it's gone, it's gone. That's why I usually pair it with a lotion, I'll put that on, leave it on for a minute or two, and then put a lotion on over top just to lock things in and make sure it sinks in. But on its own, I would not say that it gives long lasting hydration, but it does give you a very, very glowy and radiant appearance at first. On Ulta's website, they tout the key ingredients as being the snail secretion filtrate, which is that snail extract, sodium hyaluronate, which is a form of hyaluronic acid, and then arginine, which is an amino acid with antioxidant properties. And then they really emphasize on the website that it is for formulated without parabens, phthalates, and alcohols. Its suggested use is to take a small amount and to pat it into your face and then follow with moisturizer, which makes sense because that's how I found it to work best. As I mentioned, I've been using this product for about a year, maybe even longer, and this sucker lasts a long time. If I don't know if you can tell, but I still have this much left, maybe a little less than half, just a quarter left. I only use it about once or twice a week approximately, but I have been using it for a very long time. I will put four or five pumps on my hand and just rub it all over my face, neck, and back of my hands. The first time I used it, I was incredibly grossed out and I'll show you why. It's very slimy and unlike anything I've used before. And of course, I kind of had the idea in my head that I was putting snail glue on my face, which I was, but you'll see it's very slimy as you would imagine. There's no smell or odor, so there's nothing gross about it that way but it's just, it's slime malicious. So I was very grossed out the first time I used it. I didn't have a fun experience putting it on my face, but after a while, after the first use, I was fine with it, I got used to it. So I haven't experienced that grossness again, but as you can see, it does give a nice sheen. It's very glowy, it's shiny, 
but as you'll see through the video, I'm not gonna put any lotion over top of it and it just kind of disappears. I would follow their directions and just put a, a lotion over top of it to lock it in. As far as reducing fine lines and wrinkles, nah, I can't say either way. It might help in the long run, but if it does, it might be a very incremental small change that you don't really notice on yourself over time. So there are a lot of studies out there and it's very popular in Korean skincare. So there's probably some validity to it, but I personally haven't noticed it anything over the long term. But what I'm more interested to discuss is when a product touts all their cool ingredients and what they leave out, I kind of like to look at all the other ingredients that they put in just to see. I know they're going to tell me all the good, but I also want to know what else they're putting into the product, all the other ingredients, not just the key active ingredients. And as I was reviewing all the other ingredients, I found some less desirable ones, such as butylene glycol, among other ones. I know they only compose about 4% of the product and they're not the number one ingredient. However, I don't like butylene glycol in my skincare. I prefer to leave petroleum derivatives off of my skin and face. For example, I prefer putting straight vitamin E oil on my face that has no other ingredients in the bottle, just straight vitamin E or jojoba oil or things of that nature, things that have very simple ingredients. But if that doesn't bother you, then you might like this product still. I'm by no means going to throw this bottle away because I found that that's one of the ingredients. I purchased it without doing my research, so I will use it up. And I'm not that overly fanatical or concerned about it that I would throw it away. Like I said, I'm gonna use it till the end. But for that reason, I would not repurchase it. However, if I did find a formula or another brand that had the snail mucin and didn't have those extra ingredients that I didn't like, if it just had the key ingredients in it, I would buy it. I would try snail mucin again if it had simpler ingredients in it. I just try to avoid putting something that's beneficial on my face that also has something potentially harmful in it that kind of negates the purpose for me. But as I was using this product in the long term, I had a nagging concern in the back of my head regarding how they harvested this snail goo from the snails. And I just had this bad feeling that <laughs> Maybe this product is cruel to snails or they were harming them in some way. Part of me didn't want to know because I had already purchased the product and supported it, but I, I really needed to know especially when making this video. Of course, it depends on the manufacturer and it varies from company to company. But in Italy, for instance, they immerse the snails in a steam bath and it just kind of helps them produce more slime. And then they let them travel over bumpy surfaces, which further helps. Allegedly, this process doesn't harm them. It doesn't really stress them out. And it's in no way cruel to the little goo producers. This brand, COSRX, uses giant African snails probably because of their size, and they just let them travel over a mesh net for 30 minutes to collect the goo, and they're in a quiet, dark room, and supposedly they're not stressed out by it, and then they just do it for 30 minutes at a time and then put them back in their little enclosure. They grow the snails in captivity, so they're not wild snails, and I guess they just keep them in a little snail farm, I would imagine. So overall, it sounds like the extraction process is not cruel and it doesn't harm the little guys. I just further wonder after the extraction process if they're really kept in a humane enclosure or farm or whatever, but it sounds like everything's above board and it's legit. But this stuff retails at Ulta for $25. It's pretty easy to find. Have you guys ever tried this stuff? Have you used it before? And even if you have or haven't, have you heard anything about the extraction process do you know any juicy details or scandalous stuff I haven't heard or found in my research? I hope there's no bad news, but I often am skeptical and wonder about these companies if they just kind of tell us what they want us to hear or they cover up some of those things. So if you know anything I didn't find, please let me know. You know I love talking to you guys in the comments. Like and subscribe, and until next time, off I go. Very clever. Off you go.